the fourth president of Uganda, Yusuf Kironde Lule. Yusuf Kironde Lule was a professor who served as the president of Uganda. He was born in 1912 in Kampala, educated at King's College Budo, Makerere University College, Fort Harry University at Alice, South Africa, and the University of Edinburgh. He became the principal of Makerere University College. He was also Assistant Secretary General of the Association of African University in Accra, Ghana. He was a minister in the pre-independent British colonial government and later he became Assistant Secretary General of the Commonwealth Secretariat. When Idi Amin Dada came to power, he went into exile. When the war broke out between Uganda and Tanzania, Ugandan in exile began making a preparation for the establishment of a new government that will replace Idi Amin, the Da regime. When Tanzanian people defend forces, captured substantial territory, President Julius Nyerere of Tanzania ordered his troop to hold the war in order to give the Ugandan rebels time to convene and reorganize itself. The Uganda rebels started to reorganize under the former president Milton Obote and a leftist intellectual Dani Wadada Nabudere in their own respective circle. The Tanzanian government organized a conference for the rebels and exiles. Nyerere did recon reconsider Obote's role in the involvement. He didn't want to give the impression that Tanzania was going to install a government of its own choice in Uganda. He therefore He asked the former president to leave Ugandans to organize themselves and the game had to be played properly because at that moment in time there were still hostilities against Obote from the Baganda people in southern Uganda, as well as some of our friends in Kenya. He then convinced Obote to refrain from attending the conference because he thought that if he did attend the conference, 
the meeting might break up without success. Now, in place of abortives, a lot of uh, people exiled in Tanzania began to organize themselves. The conference was held, and the people who attended the conference, most of them began to favor Yusuf Kironde Lule. because they consider him a political moderate as well as a civil servant who was not tarnished by scandals or corrupt services in a past Ugandan regime. The Moshi conference that opened in Tanzania, the town of Moshi, following intern debate over which fraction person could be admitted in the conference. The delegation announced the formation of Uganda National Liberation Front, UNLF, to be governed by 30 strong National Consultative Committee, NCC, 11 National Executive Committee, and three special commissions who are going to head finance and administration. political and diplomatic affairs. And the military affairs. Ugandans came together. They organized themselves. It was time. to elect the chairman who is going to take us back home. The conference organizers say it at the helm that it was a hotly contested debate between Yusuf Kironde Lule and Paul Mwanga. Both of them wanted to become the chairman and later president of Uganda that will lead us to the next general election. <clears throat> now the war between these two men, Yusuf Lule and Paul Mwanga, seem to be something that is downrooted because some of them believe that Paul Mwanga was a strong supporter of Obote and he should not be allowed to become the chairman of UNLF because he will play the game for the former president of Obote. After a long, hard debate, a consensus was reached between those who were attending the conference.
day elected Yusuf Kironde Lule as the chairman and Paul Mwanga was made head of the military affairs committee. At that time, when these two gentlemen were elected and the National Consultative Committee was in place, that is when they realized that the liberation of Uganda from Idi Amin was progressing rapidly and it caught Uganda National Liberation Front and prepared by the time Kampala fell Lule had to move fast to put up a list of ministers that are going to represent the ethnic balance of Uganda population. Lule at that time with his cabinet boarded a flight from Dar es Salaam to Entebbe for his inauguration. The plane stopped in Mwanza. They were delayed by the Tanzanian officials because they wanted to make sure that the security was secured for the ceremony in Kampala. The next day, the chairman and his team were allowed to leave Mwanza and arrived in Entebbe. They were then escorted by the Tanzanian Defense Force motorcade in the late afternoon into Kampala. Yusuf Kironde Lule was sworn in as the president of Uganda in front of the parliament building. The president then gave a brief speech promising to bring a return of law and order in Uganda. Lule handed his brief speech by turning to his mother tongue, Uganda, and said that now it is our turn. Now it is our turn. At that moment, I was in Moscow in my last year in the University of Economics. Moscow Institute of Economics. We were seated with a group of people, including a Muganda friend of mine, my best friend. When I heard the man turning to Luganda and he said, Now it is our turn. That friend of mine told me, he said, Mr. Quill. I think Yusuf Lule has blown it. And then I asked him why. He said, I know you don't understand Luganda. But being a president of Uganda, you are there to serve the entire country. You speak in English, and then at the end you turn to your people, he said that now, it is our turn. 
I told my friend, that friend of mine, I said, you are joking. I said, I'm not joking. He told me, I think Yusuf Kiron de Lule has blown it. And he did. Tanzanian officials took Lule from parliament to Entebbe State House, where he became where he became assured and he assumed office. At that time, things were not looking very good in Kampala. Most of the institution was left. Not in good state. It was not functioning well. The country was covered by lawlessness and violence. And we knew that it was not going to be easy because he inherited a rule of a failed state. We understand what was going on, but it is immersive for us Ugandans. The moment we hold that Bible in our hand and we are sworn in as the president of Uganda, then our life change drastically and we all become a chameleon. Our colors start changing from red, black, yellow, blue, white. We seem to forget why we are sworn in as the president of Uganda. Because when Yusuf Lule Kironde took office, assumed office, he started disregarding all the agreement reached in the Moshe Conference. He started following his own rules and regulations. He disregarded that the Uganda constitution before Idi Amin did exist. Maybe he took a part of it, he used it, but the rest, he was walking his own path. The power became very, very the power became too much. when he assumed office. Together with his advisors, he began making major decisions without consulting the National Consultative Committee.
He had no interest. to attend the inauguration of the committee members. They had to cancel the ceremony. And that ceremony was rescheduled so that he could attend. Here is the president of Uganda. That is when the sign of division started to emerge. The National Consultative Committee was also very annoyed to have learned that his cabinet was awarded $5,000 worth of foreign currency. As a rehabilitation allowance. <coughs> as a rehabilitation allowance. At that time he knew that we didn't have enough money in the treasury. We had very little money. And still, you go and award your cabinet $5,000 each. That is when I knew, that is when we Uganda knew that we were heading the wrong way. that we were heading the wrong way. Here is a president who knew that the treasury had no money. At that time, when the NCC learned of it, Yusuf Kironde Lula responded by offering the councillors the same allowance which they rejected. He rejected. And we know that Lula had no trust in UNLA because he considered them to be the supporter of Dr. Apple Milton about it. And Museveni partitions. Lula government even went as far as withholding money to the army for this reason because he wanted to replace it with a new national army that would represent the entire Uganda. Of course, some of us would love that if he had planned it properly, said, I am going to replace the army, but then negotiate with the National Consultative Committee, let them pass a law giving you the right to disband the present army and replace it with whatever you want. So this man was consumed in his own world. That is when I realized, that is when we all realized that it was not going to take long before this man loses. And it didn't take long. It didn't take long because things were already messed up. He was giving public statement in Luganda. He was offering um, he gave a lot of contracts, government contracts, to the people of Uganda, businessmen, redistributing properties and enterprises seized by Amin at that time. 
and it will provoke outrage and the NCC had to do something about it. They responded by tabling a motion of no confidence in the president. 18 members voted in favor of removing him as the president and 14 against. Lule was then removed as the president of Uganda. That is the history of Uganda is telling us that even today we still have the same problem. Thank you for listening.